All right, I think I'm live. Uh, let me uh, try to loop in Connor Stubbley. I don't know if I have him on Discord. Uh, let's see, what's my Discord name? Here we go. All right. Um, so we are, hi, welcome trying to get stuff going. I wasn't originally going to be commentating this, um, but we didn't have anyone commentating, so I'm hopping in last minute, so it's going to be a little uh, frazzled here while I get set up. Um, we are watching uh, OCS game um, between Greg Shaw. He's a dark side player. The top of your screen, he is running a Coruscant CRV um, Nines deck. Uh, it's it's one popularized by uh, Tom Struther. Uses uh, Aura's blaster rifle as uh, Destiny Nines for weapon in Battle Destiny, um, and uh, his opponent is Paul Myers at the bottom of the screen, who is playing um, Yevon for Operations. Um, let's talk. Uh, 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 actually, hold on. Let me let me see if I can get my co-commentator on Connor Britton's doubly. Um, do open up Slack here. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, all right, so Paul's doing the M4 operations. They played game one earlier today. Um, Paul won game one by six. Um, you can go watch the replay of that on the PCs, uh, Twitch, and, and YouTube later. It is, um, uh, it was Paul Myers Walkers versus Greg's Legend. Paul won by six. Um, and so now in game two, we have uh, M4 ops. Um, I think my prediction of what's going to happen, uh, since Greg is playing the course on CRV, he's going to have a lot of various 2-1 sites to go wide to, um, along with these course on sites. So he's going to spread out um, and try and get in a bunch of ground damage. Stubbley's, uh, or I mean, uh, Paul is going to, meanwhile, try and put projection of Skywalkers on some of those sites and reduce down that damage and drain in space and retrieve with his objective and with Luke. Um, Greg will be trying some tricks with, uh, typically with control set for stun. I, I imagine that is the card that Paul is going to want to grab. So Greg can't loop it with things like um, first strike uh, and no escape. Um, so right now he's just going to space so he can satisfy drain free and run around. He sees that two X-wings are already on table. So um, Paul would need another X-wings, which he'll have. He'll have wedge and ship and stuff and guns, but um, he, uh, whether or not Greg has answers for, for that. Um, but he'll, he'll probably want to save three so he can control set for stun the guy with the guns. But he'll want to, he'll want to set for stun and bounce guys. And uh, of course, it's also can be used for drains. Um, uh, are you able to view the game in chip? I, uh, Stubbley is trying to figure out how he's going to join me. He just joined me on Discord. There we go. Uh, let me start a call with him. I'm just going to do a voice call because my computer I think will get overloaded if I try and add in his video as well. Um, all right, so Greg. Hey, Joe. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, let's let's see if the uh, the uh, which which. Oh, I'm I'm getting an echo of my own voice. Oh, were you watching the stream, or? Um, no. Oh, do I have the stream open? I don't think so. Okay. Do you no, have... I don't. Uh, do you have me on speaker instead of uh, uh, do you have headphones or something you can put on? Oh yeah, I that's good. Yeah. The same. Um, yeah, I got some headphones. I'll, I'll plug those in. No echo. All right, cool. Uh, so it sounds like they can hear you. I I did shave that uh, the trucker stash. It did it. Did, I did look quite redneck with the with the trucker hat and and the uh, Fu Manchu thing going on. Um, so let's see. Uh, hi, how you doing, Connor? I'm good. How are you? 
Good. I uh, maybe am playing my OCS game in an hour and a half and today, oh, nice. and then the other tomorrow. But also, Baroni said he had some stuff come up, so it's up in the air. We might just do both tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, you you had your games earlier this week. Yes, uh, I played mine yesterday, and um, I uh, I lost both games to Gavin, who played extremely well and had really nice uh matchup choices for what I was playing. So an early exit, unfortunate for me, but you know now it gives me a chance to do things like streaming. So yeah, that's, that's a positive. Ryan said in the chat, I have 90 minutes and I volunteered to cover a Myers match. Bold. I haven't picked my decks either, which is why I before I jumped on streaming, I was like, well let me see if Brony Play. I can't commentate because I need to pick decks, but then I was like, well, nobody's doing it. We we should have it's better to have coverage, so figure something out. So I was just saying before before we started this call, I think um I kind of like nines here if they are able to obviously X Wing cannons will be big. If if wedge and cannons come down, um Greg does have four saves, so he can try and set for stun the pilot, but that's only, you know sustainable so long um he's got to run around um but x-wing cannons will be big and then the control sapper stuns himself if, if greg can basically get in a beat down where a couple ships come down he bounces a pilot to get him below zuckus's ability and then he can draw you know a couple nines with that four long and clear out a bunch of stuff he'll be looking pretty good um but if he can't and projections go on both of these sites and so all the sites end up draining one and, and light takes over space, then um then dark's sort of in trouble. So I think I think the key cards are are X Wing guns, the control set for stuns, and um and it's mm -hmm. sort of sort of up to Greg on how how he maneuvers around and uses his tricks. Yes. Um I've only played the Y4 Ops versus Chorus on CRV matchup once and uh, as Y4 Ops, and I actually found it to be a really easy win for Y4 Ops if you can just clear their space. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, obviously, that's that's what Paul's going to be focusing on. I wonder if he has anything like Corellian Slip V, which really mm -hmm. neutralizes, like, Zuckus' game text and... Um, some of the other splash ships that that Coruscant CRV likes to play. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, even if he well, there's a cannon right there. Um, so even if he doesn't find a cannon, he he probably will have, you know, some stuff to take out his space. Like the nice thing with with like a lot of the um, unique starships is there's nothing to set for stun. You know, uh, if 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 it's a you know an ability to permanent pilot sort of sure, thing, sure, like gold leader. Yeah, yeah exactly. A lot of the matching ones, Wedge, Poe, Luke, um, probably has the, um, the the blue squadron guy that like cancels drains. Yeah, I don't know if Y four Ops even plays him anymore though. Oh yeah, he was eroded, yeah, right? so he only works at one part. Yeah, way. right. Which you know is still fine for the Y. You know, Yavin four Narshada. Um, you know, interaction. So it, it's probably not totally dead in Y4 Ops, but definitely a little less good. Yeah. So we see here, Light paid to drain. They drew the X-Wing cannons and liberated the system. Dark stacked a card from hand. Um, it, Jim didn't tell us what card, and I, unless I'm mistaken, I think the rule is cards from hand both people see, but cards from Life Force no one sees. Um, so I, I think that's a jump bug. Chat will, chat will probably correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, I think Jim should be changed to put in the log what card was stacked from hand, um, but we we did not see it. But then he lost a Delots and a Kylo from hand, not anticipating a lot of ground from Paul, and um, and probably have plenty of other characters to go to some of the Caesar's mm -hmm. palace. Paul then though does have both projections in hand um, to to hit both of those sites, so that's going to be a big setback for Greg to be able to just to just get enough damage through to win the game with with the retrieval. Um, from Luke and from the once the objective flips here. I'm I'm curious uh, about the um, Emperor for Seer persona. Mm -hmm. Is that just you know 
a so handy way to yeah tom's built their, your, their decks and it's basically yeah to dig down further um if you to if you can't activate enough or or to do stuff like um if you four llama seven down and you if you have a seven on top and and you pay three to set for stun somebody and and bounce them with a seven then there's and then you four on that turn you basically got two sevens with three cards in between that you paid to set for stun so what you can do is use one of the sevens like battle use it to choke or whatever and then use emperor force here to move those three cards and then draw the yeah. other seven um so yeah it's it's cute i i in in the rocks version i played i still ended up liking the destiny six one because it was useful to 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 still zap jedi with force lightning with um with you can all hide forever out and still good for mouse strikes and stuff. So I, I, I went with the destiny six one, but, but Tom was even in his ROPs playing the, the force here. Joe, did you consider doing the course on CRV sevens instead of ROPs sevens? Not at all. Or nines rather? Not even close. Um, I think, I think the ROPs version is just so much better. One, just swapping infinitely for mouse strikes and force lightnings. They can't grab everything and just and being able to just, loop those or control set for stuns if they don't grab that like they're the the swap is really good um but even possibly even more important than the swap is the roth's flip um coruscant crv um has some trouble in some matchups like old allies um we saw that in the pc 20 finals version um that, mm. and and um and also no idea can be tough for it um but the roth's option of just being like i'm just going to drop out three imperials and flip and make all dreams minus one and now i'm adding three more to my battle destiny and now i can go f with you with dooku and force lightning and choke vader and, and lord maul and maul strikes and i can i can basically <clears throat> if you're not doing anything i have an option to do something and flip and start pressure i really like that part of, of rops as well so um mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean it's just doing so much more so that, yeah, but, that but, makes but a clearly, lot of sense. There's there's reasonable disagreement because because Greg does play this, and I have seen Tom test a lot of different versions, a Thrawn version, all kinds of stuff. So, um, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. so um, Greg hasn't grabbed anything yet. Mm -hmm. I guess the most obvious grab is probably some like damage reduction. Like could be worse. Uh, could be worse. I wonder if he has any other cancelers for that. Yeah. Um, um, which might give him some. Okay, so there's the first CTV, or sorry, yeah, control set for stun. CTV and is the light version. It's, of this. it's instant grabbed, which is the correct call, because um, you don't want first strike or no escape. Because if no escape comes out, so that's bounced, and then wedge has the other gun. If you then um, no escape and bounce wedge, then it's just Poe who doesn't get a destiny against Zuckus, who's getting two, and he probably gets enough attrition to clear. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. uh, ships with weapons at the very least, and then run, and and he's in a good spot. So it's definitely the grab. But if Greg has a second copy here, anyways, um, there, yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, he's only getting one destiny with Forlom. Obviously, it's V Forlom. I've been I've been talking about two destinies. Um, obviously. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, it's, I didn't it's, notice it's, it was V either. <laughs> since drop was blanked, you you definitely rely on Forlom. Um. And sure. uh, it's it's interesting that he put him up in space when you, you, I feel like Zuckus is is fairly vulnerable um, to to weapons and stuff. I I probably well he so he's immune to is that a restraining bolt, bolt concern? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, you can always put him with Dooku, and if he gets restraining bolt, to just force lightning him. I mean, it, right. it costs you some lost force uh, uh, the force lightning and the extra four you have to deploy, but. So is this retrieving anything outside of first strike, which is not yet, obviously, but like Erica or something? Um, is there a chance he has her in this? That's a good question. Um, so the Rops version typically plays Erica V. Um, I, I, my guess is that uh, Mara and Ship is the persona in this version. Um, right. Yeah, that makes the most sense. But yeah, an Erica would be big here because that would help offset some of the math. Um, right now, we're looking at 31 versus 36 hand in life. Um, so dark side is uh, is winning. 
Uh, one less now that he used the Force Seer. And the differential from last game was six yeah, in Paul favor of Paul? Six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and so, game, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty close. So, yeah, a lot depends on what Shaw is able to um, accomplish on this turn. Because if he if he has to run away, then, you know, he doesn't have the um, um, resistance shield out. So he'll be eating four damage if he just can seize the system. Um, which, you know, he might be fine with doing. He's got, a, like you said, he's got a good advantage in terms of um, by force right now. But that makes it really close, and he can't keep eating drains of three there. So Right, um, right. It's, he's shield busted, so no no resistance right now, and I doubt he's playing a shield puller. Um, so, yeah, it's... So he's, he's, he's probably hoping he can find another CTV. Though, though I think Narshad is the only only drain three, right? Everything else would just be two. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, doesn't look like he's playing any other systems. So game one diff on the screen. Uh, yes, let me figure out how to do that. Uh, all right. I'm sure there's some way to directly like have a little box that you can type text in, but I might just need to capture a notepad window or something because I'm not sure how to do that. Um, I just want to type text. I just want a text box. Here we go, text. So Greg is still considering his options here, it looks like. All right, now he's forced draining. And there's the it could be worse. And he doesn't grab it. Wonder what he's saving that grabber for. Hmm. I mean, there are a lot of tricky interrupts that Y4R play, Y4 plays. Just to, so, I guess so it kind of depends. Possibly on if, you're... if he's anticipating a lot of drains of one on the ground, we're doomed to non-combo. Um, right. 3PO right, is right. out, of course, and that would round down all those to zero. So um, he could be worried about that. Yeah, that would definitely uh, that'd be a game winner. Okay. All right, that gets barriered. which is kind of annoying because now he can't run. He'll still be stuck with a ship there. And if he battles, what he was hoping is, well, especially if there's a power pivot, if if Wedge hits Zuckus and power pivots him, then the battle's just over and then Fett's sitting there and Paul probably just wins the game right there. Um, mm -hmm. So he did save three. Percussion missiles subtracts one targeting a hmm. star fighter. So then Zuck is, is it's still only maneuver three. So he would just need a four. Uh, no, he'd need a five to hit it because five minus one is four. So he does need a five, though Y40 plays a lot of those. Um, the question is, though, is he going to have the... Oh, he only has three four saved. I was going to say, if he has the rapid fire to pull the cannons to put on BB-8, but if he has to pay one to pull it, he won't be able to pay three to fire... And right. of course, Red Squadron Four can pay two, but nobody's on that one. Um, well, no, yeah, exactly. Uh, so why does why does he need to save three for enhanced proton? Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't. I'm saying if he if he had um, rapid fire oh. to to pull an X wing gun for post strike, uh, yeah. he would have to right, pay one right. with first strike, leaving him only with two, so he couldn't make it lost. And then, as chat points out, uh, security precautions V would would make it unhit and, and security precautions v could also do that here with the enhanced proton torpedoes yeah so, so greg just puts on maul for some to soak up some forfeit you know get that battle destiny up a little bit um and yeah so now paul loses uncontrollable even, fury from hand figuring greg's never going to deploy vader um oh yeah i might have saved that mm -hmm. just in case uh, uh greg had doubles of vader in hand he did we saw him lose one from hand but just in case he had doubles and later goes to an shizor's palace site <laughs> yeah so uh so 
So, uh, uh, Christopher Nudson says security precautions via a may hitting with X wing cannon for three is automatic. That's not exactly correct. It's it's that um, X wing cannon when you pay three, it's lost, not hit. So so security precautions you can't restore it, just hit because it's not hit, it's lost. Um, so that's why security precautions V doesn't work if you pay three because it's never actually hit. It's just lost and security precautions only targets if it's hit. Um, it, it doesn't have to do with the May automatic type interaction. Um, so this battle isn't super lovely for Greg. Um, 13 power and two destiny versus four power and one. Um, oh, actually, right. his destinies are going to be zero, right? He doesn't. He has five ability, and Zuckus requires greater. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so okay. Organized attack, though, making them all immune. Except, I don't think Red Squadron One will be immune because it doesn't have. It's one of those things where it has to be able to be moving to do those sort of things. So, so if I shift click here, Wedge is showing immune to attrition, but Red Squadron Four isn't. So he's he's he will still have to lose that ship. Yep. Killing. Yeah. Okay. So and and so now, so Greg just is gonna lose. So now he's gonna, you know. Yep. Greg will probably that, just peel restore. here or maybe lose Maul um, to a power difference. If he draws, if he draws a nine plus four is thirteen. He's he's down two. Um, so Red Squadron four will die, and Greg will peel two. Is what it looks like. I um, guess I'm just a little concerned still for Greg because you know, yeah. assuming Han Chewie Falcon comes down next turn, po I mean, uh. Ho Hobby will come back out. Like he's going to be well, staring Hobby's down a not lot out of power. Squadron Four is going to die here. Well, he doesn't have to. I guess he could just lose somebody else. He could lose two other things, but I don't think he would. Um, I, 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 if if that had missed, um, if he doesn't draw a five there, if he draws a four, it becomes minus one, and it's a miss. And Greg doesn't have to pop security precautions. Um, yeah. Okay. He he uses power pivot, which means. Greg's gonna have to peel six, so he'll probably just lose them all at that point. It's like, okay. Yep. Does he have two rogue pilots there? Oh, I oh imagine... Taco Bill points out uh, Lord Maul would make the nine a ten, so he'd only be peeling one. But now, without the four power, he'd be peeling five. Yeah. Uh, does he have two rogue pilots there? Uh, no, so he doesn't have anyone with wedge. Um, the Poe Poe is not a, a red or rogue squadron pilot. So I mean, theoretically, I guess if he wanted wedges cancel, he could lose Poe and the ship instead of red squadron four, and that would keep the X wing gun on table. He might want to do that. There's a second; it could be worse. So two copies of those and an escape pod combo. So at this point, I'd probably be grabbing the. It could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Maul dies, and we're gonna see if Red Squadron Four or Poe and BB-8 die. All right. He does do the mm -hmm. Red Squadron Four. I interestingly, I'm I pro I I yeah actually I definitely would have done Poe and ship there because that can't run. Um, you can drop Hobby back into that Red Squadron Four. And now you cancel his only destiny with Wedge. So you can just battle into that. You have the X-Wing gun to shoot down Zuckus. Um, and if Zuckus runs, mm -hmm. like, it's fine. But but you can just battle and cancel his destiny. You don't even have to shoot down Fett and make him burn a Gick. And like, I, I think I would have valued the, the other ship more, basically. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't see who was on Red Squadron 4. Oh, Red Squadron 4 had um, its matching pilot, but he got control set for stun at the end of Paul's turn, so it was just empty with a cannon. Maybe Paul's afraid of barrier. Could be. What I'm curious about, so and, and Greg's in the tank here, he's thinking, do I move? Because if he moves... Well, uh, yeah. And he doesn't have... Gigs, if he has a gig, then you move. So if he moves and he doesn't have Gick and like Han Chewie Falcon comes out, it could wreck Fett and Slave One and he might be just be peeling a bunch. But if he doesn't move, he might lose both ships here. And then he's losing because Light's retrieving all the damage that Dark is doing and doing more. 
that, that barrier. Yeah, I think if was rough. If you have Gick, it's a no brainer. And if he hesitated a little bit more, I would, I would have, yeah, you know, I would have, he think, would have had to say. I think he's in a bad spot here. Yeah. So what decks do I yep. play against Baroni? Uh, so uh, against uh, Baroni? Yeah, I, is is James, James is on here? I I'm guessing I don't know who typed up Baroni's list, but I yeah, last night I went and I looked at Baroni's what he played at Worlds. He played like a Hitco beatdown Jedi presence Silver Glen thing, and uh, there was two Anakin Skywalkers in there, and I was like, what? He can't he can't play oh, no. this card. Um, uh, and then Eric was like, oh, it, probably whoever typed it up because Baroni had like printed lists, not not emailed yeah he was yeah. like probably whoever typed it up didn't realize it was the interrupt not the character so that, that <laughs> right. should probably yeah. unless he did play the character by mistake um that should probably get changed in uh on the deck list page yeah anyone who played him would be able to speak to that i guess but um yeah that would that would be a a, a grievous error huh. For a Hiko player. Um, okay, well, you could... Um, I, I mean, I think, yeah, I think Baroni is a tough one because, you know, I, I don't know his full gamut of preferred decks, but I've seen him play things like ISB and um, more controlly stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, he like, played, Legend. Uh, Silence, bring him at Worlds. Yeah, so, like, the mains... The mains thing is definitely on the table i would i i think i don't know i think a, i think legend is probably a really safe bet because it is performing well right now and obviously his boy justin just won worlds with it so um i imagine it's probably a low effort for him to pick that deck up and be like okay i know how to run it with this and he's played legend to great success before so I don't know. I would probably be ready for that if I were uh, if I were sense. facing down. Hey, Taco Bell. Justin. I mean, uh, I mean, Steve. Yeah. We got Ken Kien deployed. He's going to add to drains, add to weapon draws. Ooh, and Tarn. Tarn and Tarn's his fourth rebel, so that'll flip him. He's going to add a retrieval here, and uh, there's there's nobody on board. Um. On, on Fett and Slave 1, there's also no weapon on Grace Squadron 1. I think he's just adding him for forfeit fodder, which is, again, why I would have preferred the other ship. Because if you had if you had tossed the pilot on, on the other ship, you just cancel with Wedge. And here, uh, is one of those guys a Rogue Squadron pilot? I don't think so, right? Oh, yeah, no, Ken uh, is a Rogue Squadron pilot. Ken is, yeah. Okay, so he's still going to get the cancel here. Um yeah, if Greg doesn't have the gig here, the match is probably over. Um, 21 and 2 Destinies versus Cancel, which means Fett covers 14. So he's losing 7 plus 2 Destinies. That would be... Uh... Which are a 5. <laughs> and a 4, 9. So Greg is losing 16. Uh, and that'll be the game. He's he's at uh right now thirty, but that'll put him at fourteen hand in life versus twenty six. He'll be down by twelve hand in life, and just Paul can just kind of drain and retrieve and chase him around in space and win the, right. win the game fairly easily there. But if there's a gick here, we'll play on. There is all right, makes sense. Usually the CRV plays two of them. Yeah, I mean it, it would have just been nonsense for him to have moved Zuckus with that yeah. one because because well, if he's if he's worried about you know either way he's getting beaten down yeah. like so you know I don't know I guess when he when he like you said when he lost um the x-wing with the cannon that definitely kind of opened up Greg's options a little bit but um but yeah that yeah, I think uh I think I mean Greg only has two cards in hand. It's he, he obviously wants to be digging for the Intimidator Persecutor, but the problem is even so. So Paul can move here and block damage, and he'll just eat a drain of one and one, which he can retrieve with Luke and his objective, and he'll be draining two uh -huh. and three. Like 
actually, he could probably even sit and not move and eat drains of one, one, one while retrieving two and draining three and two. He's doing just from his drains and retrieve, he's netting seven versus Greg's three. He's ahead by four right. and he's uh, 29 versus uh, 26. He's down three. He'll be down six hand in life, but he'll be gaining four every cycle. So, but that's not counting like it could be worse and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's not looking. Greg needs to find a way to put out some damage. And he, you know, I almost wonder if Maul would have just been better on the ground last turn to, you know, run away in space and um, even, you know, even put Boba Fett at a different system, like just spread to two systems, put Maul down at one of the Coruscant sites. So now you've got drains of four going through yeah oh he does have snap so he could have but he he went ahead and just placed that out of play i guess it was too, maybe too buried in his lost pile um but he puts that out of play with his objective to retrieve power pivot oh, oh wow he was playing snap there you go yeah he just opted not to move he just retrieved he's like the math is good here i'm i'm fine mm -hmm. He didn't, yeah, he didn't want to risk, makes a lot of especially sense. with only four force. He could have moved wedge and then someone else, but like an another control set for stunt. Like say he moves, say he moves two of the ships. He would have needed to move all three, and then he would only had one force saved. He's just opening himself up still to like counterplay. There was no need to move. Yeah, and the the truth. Yeah, he it's he's to spread later if he really needs to. It's like right now, like you said, the math's in his favor. So it's up to Greg to um, change the, the, the math at this point, not not Paul. Um, oh, which reminds me, I still never figured out how to... I tried to add a source. Here's a text. If I click add source, why did it not... Man, If I'm Greg, yeah, I think your options here, if you can find, yeah, find Intimidator and Persecutor, then there's a chance you could um, set for Sun Luke and and get some sort of beat down on um, Gold Leader. I guess that's an option, but he's still threatening Barrier. Uh, although, yeah. That's that might be a little risky at this point. Uh, well, with with only three cards in hand, then yeah, I don't think there's a great chance of of Greg having a ton of answers right now for for a lot of the tricks that Paul will have. Oh, I didn't see Macro Scan was out. That's interesting. That's a good card. Yeah, I had I, I saw that Hayes had it in his um day two deck list. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, we, we, I played a, we played a copy in Shadow Collective. I played two copies in the Rops Nines. Um, it's it's so broken. It's it's just an easy way to dig down further. It's an easy way to move cards around. Even when you do stuff blind, you're like it, it lets you be able to go early because you can just be like, oh, I want them all strikes, and it's like pay two, peek at two cards. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're both low, move one. With macro scan and four on the other, and then blind do it. You've just improved yep. your odds. If one's high, one's low, move the low one and duel. If they're both high, great, duel. But like, it it just it gives you so many more options early, knowing what your cards are. And um, yeah, the ones per gamer circulates cool too. But just peeking and moving, manipulating cards is is crazy. Add in seven sister Janice and four lum and macro scan, and you can just have any card you want anywhere and do anything you want yep yeah that is, that is pretty pretty nuts um so still not grabbing it could be worse i um maybe don't know how i feel about that well maybe uh greg has its worst combo in the deck uh-huh yeah that would be something not a bad card to put in there and match play yeah
Okay. Sure. Turns out into a two. Kira, and she would cancel it, so then he could grab something else. Something Kira like makes sense for a, this. That's yeah. a good, good thought as well. I appreciate that. So Janice comes down. That'll increase the drain by one. And uh, Cheezor comes down. Greg's Greg's trying to get math in his favor, but it's still just going to be a two, which it could be worse, can still reduce down the two instead of a one, but it'll still just be two, three, four, five versus, I mean, drains a five, but then retrieve two. I mean, right now, even, yeah, light's paying, light has to pay eight to do all that, but that's fine. They they have the eight for, for quite a while. They're at 27 hand in life. Um, yeah, great. I mean, if Greg has... Block the dark, you know, block the dark space damage so then it's just four to four to seven instead of five to seven yeah i I guess i guess a lot of this just depends on what tricks or or you know what what greg has left like if he because he can buy he can buy a couple of turns of just eating damage Uh um Right, if he he's not, he's not intimidator, persecutor, and do another bounce where he bounces a dude and comes down, and uh, I don't know if there's any way he can add a destiny, like in space, if he got someone on on intimidator, persecutor. I can't, I can't think of any cards in nines that would give him two destinies. Uh, Mara and ship, if he's doing that, um, yeah, and has an imperial for it. But yeah, Sean's just drawing up a bunch. Trying to find an answer. Hmm. Yeah, he, he hasn't gotten down uh um, Paul's life force enough to where Paul has to start making strategic decisions with how he uses his force. So Paul is sitting pretty right now. Yep. Yeah, he'll retrieve with Luke. He'll drain two and two. And if he liberates it, it'll be four this turn and three going forward. Okay, so so Greg controls it um, so that he doesn't so that you only lose that control instead of potentially, it's probably getting liberated with all those snub biters. So instead of four, he loses one. Right. Um, yeah. It's probably. And assuming, be... assuming three controls, then yeah. yeah that's if, what you know. I was about to say. He's probably playing three, three controls in here. Um, okay. Who's lightning? Lose power by that. Without battles, it's hard to see. Even if even if dark was on every site, he'd he'd be draining two, three, four, five, six, and in space, if light didn't chase, is seven, and light can drain three and two. Once this is liberated, three and two, and retrieve two is seven. So like under the magical <laughs> world, where dark went to both the other sites, and light didn't chase in space. Dark just gets to match damage. Now, uh, yeah. a couple other things. A Lord Maul on the ground could add an extra drain of one. An Isard to the war room could add an extra damage, two damage. Um, and hopefully yep. that's what Greg was drawing for, was a spy and maybe Lord Maul. But my point is, Greg's very behind on the math and basically needs to be at multiple more sites just to even get even on the math. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, Baroni just got back to me. Um, he's not He's not able to play today. We were going to do one game today and one tomorrow. So that'll be pushed back. We're going to do both of them tomorrow. I don't have the exact time because we might start earlier. Um, but so there will be no Baroni Olsen game in an hour. That gives uh, me the evening to figure out decks. Yeah, more time to over overthink things. Although I don't get the sense that you uh, are are one to overthink things. Too I don't ever regret 
thinking. Um, I usually come <laughs> to the right choice. I, I don't. I, I almost never overthink and then end up on something I'm unhappy. Well, you know, this is actually something I, I, I'm glad to have the opportunity to ask you because, you know, for me as a player, match play has has really confounded me because I do tend to get overly caught up in, well, what's he likely to play? Because, you know, as a, as a, as a competitive player, you, you want to come in as prepared and with as many as much of an advantage as possible. But I do th- think that if you overthink things, then you can end up putting yourself at a disadvantage because, you know, in my example, I, I, I was pretty confident Gavin would play Rops since he plays it a lot and is very good with it. And then he pivot, pivoted to a really cool mainzy Walker build. Hmm. So, it, which my legend was much less equipped to deal with. Um, you know, I practiced that matchup leading into the leading into it, but not, against one that had like four EPPs or whatever it was. So, um, so anyway, so I ended up disadvantaging myself a little bit in, in the way I prepped for, for the Rob's matchup. So, so yeah, I guess my question to you is when you're going against someone uh, in match play, what, how do you balance, you know, the decisions like, Oh, well, I could throw this card in for this likely matchup versus I'm not going to play that game. I'm just going to play what's a super solid 60 card deck. It's definitely trickier when you know who your opponent will be um, versus the match play shuffle that we tend to do at events is a little bit more pure in terms of you have to, you can't sell out. Um, right. And and that is the risk of, of playing match play where you know your opponent is. They might sell out or you might talk yourself into selling out and being wrong. Um I think you don't want to paint yourself into a corner where if you're wrong, you lose. Um, And so ideally you will have, you won't sell out so hard that you risk that. Um, It's, it's fine to basically, you should have prepared lines. You should potentially even have tech cards for what you're expecting from them. Um, But you shouldn't, say i'm gonna do this so that i win the match when they have this because they may not they may not have that um right like silver bullets are probably less less good choices than something that you know like for example yesterday i I put in a tantive as a third ship in my legend yeah thinking that would really swing the robs matchup and and I, I don't think including that lost me the game yesterday, but I was like, well, this is a I great actually, card yeah, in general. We, and... we talked about that before you added that in yesterday morning. Um, and I actually really like Tanev and Legend. I, once once we talked about it, I was like, that actually makes the Rops match really a lot easier because you can just not play your system and immediately go to theirs. And um, mm-hmm. and you can make it a one system thing. And if, if they don't deploy their system like mht did in the finals whereas if they do deploy their system then great you go take that over but you can also bounce between or alter if you need to to flip them back um but yeah i i think i don't so i don't think see that as as like a too much of a sellout in terms of it's mostly good against rops but it also does some other stuff against um set your course or pto or i don't know um it's not it's not terrible to have uh a, an extra six to pull it and and a, a random ship um mm-hmm. so here comes it could be worse are we gonna see the grab on the third time that it's played yeah we do mm-hmm. um so i i yeah it's it's i think one or two cards is fine to tilt i'd be more worried about a whole deck about being like i'm gonna i'm playing profit because i think he's gonna 100 percent be on shadow collective and i i have a plan for all his blasters i got a bunch of uh, keep your eyes open and sense for point man and i don't i don't even remember if that's me in a sense whatever and and i and i've got um and and i've got a gift so all his destinies are going to be minus two and i you know and you so you go down this this super niche rabbit hole and then it turns out that they're playing you know um bring him or something and you're like well um so i i basically i wouldn't tilt whole decks but a couple card slots is never you know it's fine it's it's hard when you're going up against someone like yeah like you said it's harder when you you're going against someone you know what they play like if if you're going up against Paul 
you have to have a plan for Y4O, but it's really hard to build a deck that consistently beats Y4O that will also do well against the field. Um, at least, and that's what I found in pre- you know prepping for these sorts of uh, matchups. So, um, yeah, huh? To be known as a player that is really good with a certain deck, I think also makes it harder to prepare for because again like you said you can sell out okay so 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 maul came down and um his ship yeah which is a little interesting because if he takes out gold leader tarn oh yeah gold leader too yeah i'm i'm oh hyper escape it's not a card i was anticipating Get combo, of course, can cancel it, but it doesn't look like Greg has his other copy of that. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Maybe he does. There's a pause here. I think you play it if you've you've got it here. You've got a seven tracked, which becomes a nine, a ten with Maul. They forfeit for five and five. So they would cover. The ship would still uh would still uh exist. But presumably with two cards in hand. Oh, so he uh, he does let the hyper escape go through. I think that pause could only have been a get combo, or I mean, theoretically, maybe he'll it could be a sense, but obviously you wouldn't pause that long on a sense because if if you got a seven there, it's going to fail. Um, mm. And even if you got a a six, say, then you would have no battle destiny. So I don't think he'd pause that long on a sense. Um, I don't think. I don't know why you're worried about Gick, because Zuckus is not, with the way Paul is spread out now, Zuckus isn't going to get beat down. Uh, I, w- I would have gone ahead and uh, gone ahead and get comboed and tried to clear out two guys just for board control. Right. Um, right now, I think we're going to see Zuckus move in front of Poe and Maul maybe move to Narshada and Cloak, because you're losing two to cloak versus potentially um, four, four, yeah. But he's still behind on the math. Paul, Paul just spread it. Yeah. Out last turn. It's, right now, it's going to be drain a three because of uh, Gray Squadron one adding to the drain. So drain it three at uh, Yavin yeah, four. Potentially two if he liberates one of the other systems. Oh, he goes Zuckus there. They won't draw anything. Yeah, he's got a six ability, which is not greater than six. So, like, it's no destiny there, um, unless one of the two cards in his hand is a ship with ability. Um, and he just leaves Maul no cloak. I, I probably would have moved and cloaked because then you're only eating two to Narshada instead of four. Um, yeah, right now. Uh, Scott has 22 minutes, Paul has 19, so um, plenty of time. Um, Shaw is at 21 hand in life um, before this round of control phase damage versus uh, 23. So Paul's already up by two, and he's about to do a bunch of damage. Yeah, I, I'm seeing a quick end to this game. No, he was playing Erica. Uh, but non V. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah huh. And that is a popular one in the course on CRV for mains. So you can just, you you can go wide to all these drain two sites. And then if they take over one of them, you can just Erica. Right. So he didn't, he didn't put her, he could have put her down at the, um, yeah, at the, the, war, at room, the but... war room. I wonder if he forgot that. Maybe he deployed her undercover there and then broke in her cover. Mm hmm. Did he? He didn't draw this turn, so he definitely had her. He would have had to do her instead of Maul, um, which probably would would have been worth it. But also, the math is looking bad right now. Right now, yeah, it is twenty four to seventeen. So he's up by seven, and then he'll retrieve another and draw phase. He'll be up by eight. Yeah. So oh, this this is, this is gonna be over in two turns. Or less. Ten. No, he'll be up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we saw 
you, Gavin advanced, Paul advanced, um, Bastion advanced. Um, and then Taco won his first game against MHT. And I don't think, uh, I haven't played my match. Desai hasn't played either games of his. Oh, he did have a card in hand with ability. So he will be able to get past Zuckus. And as far as, even if he has, draws a nine, uh, two characters cover that. Yeah. Oh, the reason why he didn't move well, all on Cloak is it would have been his one destiny he needed for gold leader. The one force. Oh, yeah. Move. Yeah. Right, right. But now uh, yeah, I just don't know. Now he has plenty of ability. He gets three destiny because uh, green leader's adding one and then Haven's going to add one. Um, unless Greg has a second kick, which he, which he did, actually, we think, because of the jump pause at the hyper escape. Right. Um, we right. think he probably has another gick, but even if he gicks out of here and kills two characters, um, he loses next turn. Then he drains one, two, three, four, five, and light drains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and retrieves two, <laughs> 11 to five. Um, so. Oh, and he just retrieved with first strike. Yeah, mm -hmm. Greg's 20 lost pile to Pulse 4 just tells the story here. Yeah, I mean, this is such, it's such a hard um, matchup to approach, I, I've always felt. I guess, you know, if you want to play the hindsight game, then maybe you just, you know, you, you spread to every single site you can, but, you know, you only get, you know, you're not pulling sites, so you have to draw for them and all that. So. Yeah, oh. no, he didn't even have the gick, so he had to peel um, six on top of the... I wonder what the pause was, then. Yeah. It, yeah, I don't know. Lana combo? Okay. But you, why wouldn't you use okay. that to cancel, then? I don't know. Yeah. Um... Oh, maybe, no, I was going to say maybe the pause was on Paul to if he could potentially grab it, but he had something grabbed. I don't know. Anyway, all right. Stop concedes. Paul uh, advances. Um, I'm going to pull up the uh, the bracket here and display it on my screen. If you all give me a second. So we had uh, Paul advance. Uh, we had Gavino, 1983 advance. Uh, Drew and Kessling was, I think game one was decided by just like a couple force, but they, they still need to play game two. Uh, Which Kassling will be today, advanced. actually. And Taco Bell won his first game by like four or six or something it was close no it was like 15 wasn't it, it, it i think it was 15. yeah he won his first game by like 14 maybe i don't know almost. yeah so it was it was Taco Bell's up by by a, a decent amount but coffee pass and uh kessling are close um and then oh, the bill matchup yeah so we have one close one one mid-teens one and then three matchups that have not started yet um i think me and baroni are tomorrow um not sure what the bill by 13. Click the link. Oh, Dan has Dan has a the the oh, it's just the same information. Doesn't say any differential or anything. Um yep, so uh we got some more OCS. Uh let me let me look up for you exactly when when that last few games of the round of 16 are. Uh we have both games for Desai are on Desai versus Eric are on this Saturday at three Pacific, six a.m. Eastern, um, starting. So this this yeah this Saturday at six a.m. Eastern. Then we have Taco Bill versus MHT game two is today. Uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern. 
So in about seven and a half hours, or uh, sorry, four and a half hours, then both games for Kipple and Cryptophys are this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. So right in the middle of football stuff, come watch Star Wars instead. And uh, me and Baroni are tomorrow, probably around 1 Eastern. I think we're going to start a couple hours earlier than we were to, to do both games. Cool. Thanks for uh, commentating with me. Thanks, everyone, for yeah, uh, in the chat for chiming in.